Before I get into the word today, um, I mentioned this the first week in the year, but I realized that I didn't give you scripture. So I just wanted to uh, supplement what was said before by giving you some scripture. So we've had a lot of church scandals recently, and I want to tell you how to respond to it. The first thing is you get facts and confirmation. So you don't comment until you know the facts, until you get you know, confirmation, because sometimes... Sometimes things are true and sometimes they're not true, but, but wait until you know which one it is. Amen? The second thing is, um, when you are evaluating people, you have to determine whether it is a mistake or a planned lifestyle. Whether it's a mistake, the Bible says anyone can fall. That's called a mistake. A planned lifestyle means you plan to be in this and you are not repentant, okay? And so the book of Galatians, it says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. So if somebody falls, it's up to the more spiritual persons to restore them. And if somebody violates their oath of office, so to speak. They should be removed from office for a period of time and restored if they are repentant. Is everybody understanding me? The second thing is, some people can be restored, but some people are disqualified from restoration. What do I mean by that? You can be restored if you don't violate certain things. If somebody, for example, is a sexual predator um, and they have manipulated people in the church, the Bible really doesn't have a provision for restoration for that. If someone ends up in a sexual relationship with somebody and it's you know, something that they fell into, there's restoration possible. But there are certain things that you do that violate the office that you, you, you occupy. So some people can be restored, some people have to be disqualified and not hold that office again. And I'm just sharing with you the word. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11, and it says, but now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone who is named a brother, who is sexually immoral, intentionally, I added in these things, intentionally and unrepentant. That's the context of it. Because if, if, you, if, you, if you can't forgive somebody who, is, um, who made a mistake, then none of us would make it. So it's not talking about people who make a mistake. It's talking about people who intentionally um, engage in a process and they are unrepentant. It says, or covetous, or idolater, or reviler, or drunkard, or an extortioner. Not to even eat with such a person. That's a powerful statement. It's the word. I'm not giving you, this ain't my word. So if somebody is engaged in egregious behavior that violates the word of God and they are unrepentant, the Bible says don't even eat with them. Okay? And then we have to be aware of misrepresentation. So some people are saying that they are occupying an office, but they are actually misrepresenting God. And we have to focus on principles, not people. Nobody gets an excuse. Nobody gets a pass. If you say you represent a, a certain position in the kingdom of God, you have to obey the word. You got you to gotta look at, at the scripture. You don't, you don't look at a person, you look at the scripture, okay? So some people are misrepresenting God, and they are professional parallels. So for example, there are certain things that if you do it as a lawyer, you get disbarred. And somebody get, some people get disbarred for life, never return. Some people, they are restored after a period of time. So I just wanted to make sure that I share that with you and to remind you today that our testimony is what qualifies us. Your testimony. What is your reputation and your testimony? If your reputation and your testimony is soiled, it disqualifies you. So that's why we have to keep 
a good testimony. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 says this. This is a faithful saying. If a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober, good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not... Um, not covetous, one who rules his household well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church? Not a novice, lest he should be puffed up and so on. So basically, it's saying that you should qualify. And you have to look at the qualifications before you apply for the job. If you can't, qualify, if you can't keep up with the qualifications, then you need to say, that's not my job. Amen? So I just wanted to share that with you so that you can know how to deal with these situations. And it's never a personal thing. It's a word thing. It's a kingdom thing. And God doesn't make exemptions because of your status. Everybody has to obey the same thing. Amen?